everyone, this is Christine Ballas, and we are moving through the biblical year 5784, the year of the door. And we are about to enter into the month of the door, and that is the month of Nisan. And it's in this very month where the Lord commanded the children of Israel to put the blood of an unblemished lamb over the doorposts of their homes. And when the angel of death saw the blood, death would literally pass over all who were in the home. And in this month, we also see that Jesus is that lamb, that unblemished lamb, and he is also the door. And in the chalkboard teaching, we'll discover that he is also the lion, the lion of Judah. And that tribe is connected to this very month. So enjoy the chalkboard teaching. Thanks so much for tuning in and be blessed. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of Nisan. And Nisan is not only the beginning of a new month, but it's the beginning of the whole new season of spring. So many of us are rejoicing in that, right? Well, in addition to that, it's also the beginning of a brand new spiritual year. The month of Nisan begins God's spiritual year. And actually the word Nisan comes from the Hebrew root word for Ness, and that means miracles. And this month of Nisan is also known as the month of Aviv, and in Hebrew that means spring or the ripening of the barley harvest. And you know, really guys, creation is a testimony that shows us God's heart and timing because when everything around us looks dead, the miracle of spring is happening and it's about to burst Forth, it's as if the earth is being redeemed before our very eyes. And I think about Isaiah 43, 19, which says this, Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. It's here in this month that the Lord is declaring along with all of his creation that now here in Nisan, this month is going to be the new starting point. Nisan is a month of new life and miracles. This is the month of God's redemption story. This is the story of the Exodus and the Passover. And the story really are types and shadows of our slavery to sin and our redemption and deliverance through the Passover lamb, Messiah Jesus. My name is Christine Vallis and I'm blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you guys in real time. So thank you so much for watching. I pray you are blessed by this teaching. So Nisan is a month of firsts and the Lord is really saying the best way to start is to know that you are redeemed. There'll be no more types and shadows. This is the real thing in real time. Jesus is the Passover lamb who came to redeem us all because of his great love for us. God appointed a time for our redemption and all began here in the month of Nisan. So I encourage you to read through the book of Exodus this month and read the whole account of the Exodus. And also you can find the story retold in Deuteronomy 7 and in Psalm 78 and 105, just to name a few places. But this month of Nisan is truly a month of firsts and we'll see many firsts as we go through the chalkboard teaching. And the first one, that we see is when God gave the first commandment to Israel. We see this in Exodus 12 verses one and two. And it reads, now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying that this month of Nisan shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So the question is, why all of a sudden did the Lord say now that this month of Nisan is going to be the first month? Well, the answer is because there was another new year already established. And many of you probably know about it. It happens in the fall, in the month of Tishri. It's known as Rosh Hashanah. It's when the numerical year advances and that civil calendar turns over and it's based on the creation of the world and it's likened to 
a physical birth. So here we see this first commandment and I would suspect it would be very important being the first commandment, right? And as if the Lord is saying to the Israelites and he's saying to us that we've been in Egypt oppressed by the world system. We've been a slave to Pharaoh, which is basically a picture of the devil and sin. But get ready because your new life is about to begin. Sin has separated us and I am going to redeem you. The time has come for me to buy you back. It is time to leave. It is time to relocate. It is time for your exodus. It is time to receive your spiritual birth. It is time for a restart. Basically, this is what Jesus is saying to um, Nicodemus in the Gospels. He says, you must be born again. And it's personal. You know, that first commandment that the Lord spoke, he said, this will be your beginning of months and a new year to you. So I encourage you, if you've not received salvation and confessed Jesus and had this new birth experience, I encourage you, today is the day of salvation. You must be born again. And when you do so, you will be a new creation in Christ and your new life will begin. So as we read through the book of Exodus, the Lord really gives us a foreshadow of how he's going to redeem us. And in this month of first, he initiated the first sacrifice, which is the Passover lamb right here. Of course, that is Jesus. And in Exodus 12, we see that the Lord instructed the Israelites to do certain things. And he told them that they needed to take an one year unblemished lamb on the 10th day of the month of Nisan, and they were to bring it into their home and keep it for four days. And then on the 14th day of Nisan, they were to slaughter the lamb and put the blood of the lamb over their doorposts. They would then remain in their homes, roast the lamb and eat all of it, burn anything that would remain, and they were to eat it in haste because this was the Lord's Passover. And on that night, under a full moon at midnight, the fullness of the month would come and the last of the 10 plagues would come through the land. The death of the firstborn of man and beast would come through. And when God saw the blood of the lamb over their doors, death would literally pass over all who was in the house. The blood of the lamb would cover their sins. And this is where we get the word Passover from. So this first Passover in Exodus was just a foreshadow of our redemption in Jesus because he was the firstborn of all creation. He was that lamb without blemish as Peter and Paul declare. And as we read in the Gospels in the account of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, even the dates line up perfectly to that first Passover and they all point to Messiah because on that 10th day when the Israelites brought the lambs into their homes, on that same day in the New Testament, Jesus rode into the house of God, into Jerusalem, otherwise known as Palm Sunday. And then it was on the 14th of Nisan, the very day that the Israelites slaughtered the lamb and applied the blood, was the exact day that Jesus was slain on the cross. It was on Passover, otherwise known as Good Friday. And then on the 17th day of Nisan, this was the day that the Israelites rose up and they went through the Red Sea. And it's the very day that Jesus rose. It was his resurrection day. He rose on a feast of first fruits, otherwise known as Easter. So now we are living in the new and better covenant, right? And Hebrews 8, 6 says that we are established on better promises. So here in the New Testament, Jesus' blood not only covered the sins of Israel, but his blood took away the sins of the world. John 1.29 says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, what about his body? Well, his body actually redeemed us from our sickness. You know, God instructed the Israelites to eat the lamb. In Psalm 105:37, it says that they left Egypt and there was not one feeble. So how could this be that this whole nation of Israel left? They were slaves. They were under harsh conditions, but not one of them was ill. It was because of their supernatural 
divine healing. Healing is part of our salvation. And we actually see this underscored in the constellation this month. It is Aries and the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The gospel is on circuit over our heads. And Aries is a picture of the lamb. Again, it's not just any lamb. It's the Passover lamb. Of course, it's Jesus. And as we look actually even more into the constellation, we see that three main stars that make up that constellation, their names are translated the wounded, the bruised, and the slain. And that just reminded me of Isaiah 53, 5, that says he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And then again in the New Testament, 1 Peter 2.24 says he bore our sins in his body, and by his stripes we were healed. So any way you look at it, coming or going, Old or New Testament, we are healed in Jesus' name. Healing is truly part of our salvation. And you know, Hosea says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Jesus redeemed us from so much more than we think. Not only did he redeem us from the slavery of sin, but of poverty, sickness, and death. Galatians 3.13 says that Jesus became a curse so that we can partake of all the blessings, all the blessings that are in Deuteronomy 28 and all of the promises of God are yes and amen in him. Jesus truly paid it all. So let us not forget any of his benefits. Now, as we go through, we'll see that God instructed Israel to celebrate this first feast of Passover throughout all the generations. And I believe that he did this so that they would remember their redemption and that they would recognize Messiah. And you know, as we read through scripture, we'll see that 40 years after that very first Passover, Joshua and the children of Israel celebrated the first Passover in the promised land. And then through Throughout the Old Testament, King Hezekiah, Josiah, Nehemiah, and Ezra, just to name a few, celebrated Passover. And even in the New Testament, we see Jesus himself celebrating Passover. If you've read about the Last Supper in the Gospel, that was actually a Passover Seder. I mean, I never knew that until just several years ago, but I think that's awesome. And you know, when Jesus said that he earnestly desired to have this Seder with them, I believe it was because there would be no more types and shadows, that true redemption was here through his love and sacrifice. So Passover continues to be celebrated to this day around the world in synagogues, churches, and even in our homes. And so the Lord is reminding us in this season where true redemption is found. It's not in any nation, any president. It's in the Lamb. It's in the Lamb of God. And it seems so foolish. You know, Paul even said this in 1 Corinthians, for the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. New life begins when we receive Jesus, the Passover lamb, into our hearts, and this is truly the miracle of all miracles. So I encourage you to celebrate our redemption with a feast of Passover. So as we read through the Exodus, we will see that the Lord actually gives us steps on how to walk in newness of life. And the Lord says in scripture here, he says, you're redeemed, so now rise up. Just like Jesus rose on first fruits on Resurrection Sunday, 1 Corinthians 15.20 said that Christ became the first fruits of all who were asleep. So that tells us that as believers, we can rise up because that same resurrection power that was in Jesus is in us. That's what it says in Romans 8.11. And it's not just in us when we die, but his resurrection power is in us and it's in us now to live now so that we can rise up now. So the Lord, I really feel he's saying, hey, if you're redeemed, you're a new creation, so start living like one. <laughs> and you know, we don't have to do so in our own strength. It's by his spirit. And that's depicted this month in the letter that's connected to this month. It's the Hebrew letter Hey, which is a picture of the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. And it not only raises us up, but it leads us 
on. And that's depicted in the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. The Lord leads us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So let's receive his fresh wind of reviving as we renew our minds with our true identity, our bodies will follow. So as he calls them, he calls us to walk on. The action associated with this month is continuous walking. We see it here, putting our right foot and best foot forward in trust. So Exodus 13, 4 says, on this day, you are to go forth. And Leviticus 26, 3 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you would not be their slaves. I broke the bars of your yoke and made you to walk erect. So I believe the Lord is saying, you're free, so go forth. And you know, what happens is I think that Often we, we know that we're set free in the spirit, maybe even in the physical, but often in our minds, in our will and emotions, we remain slaves. And even though we may sing that we are no longer a slave to fear, many of us are. And you know, the antidote, it's in Jesus, it's in his love. First John 4, 18 says, perfect love casts out fear. And God says, I am love. So if there's any area of fear that rises up in your life, just ask the Lord to give you a fresh revelation of his love for you in that area. And as he does, you will be able to take that step of faith, knowing that you are his beloved. He also said that he redeemed us to walk erect and walking erect is basically in confidence, you know, in our righteousness, which is in him. And so we are to walk in our true identity. We are not to walk like the world. We are not to walk like an Egyptian, right? And he doesn't call us to walk alone, to be our own master, or even to walk in loneliness. He calls us to walk with him. Jesus said, follow me. But we will become whoever we walk with really. And so as we walk with him and as we talk with him, we will discover his true nature and he will tell us that we are his own. And he didn't ask the Israelites to make the way for them to walk. And he doesn't ask us either because why he's already made the way in advance. Isaiah 43, 16 says he makes a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. Jesus is the way, and we will follow him with our right foot of faith even more and more, knowing we are the beloved of God. So now, after we've been set free, we can expect the enemy to come chasing after us, just as Pharaoh chased down the Israelites. But the Lord says, fear not, remember who I am and remember who you are. Walk on in your authority. And we see this in Exodus 14. The Israelites were at the crisis situation there, standing at the Red Sea. They were complaining to Moses. They were in fear. And Moses asked God, Lord, what are you going to do? And God told Moses, I am going to use you. <laughs> he said, you speak to the people and you speak to the sea. Use what's in your hand and use what's in your mouth. Lift up the rod of God and speak my words and I will work my wonders through you. So Moses stood there at the edge of the Red Sea. He was 80 years old. He was in the decade of pay of the mouth and so are we right here in, in the decade of 5780. And he stood there at the place called Pi Ahiroth, which literally means mouth of freedom. And it was there where Moses lifted up his rod and he lifted up his voice and the sea lifted up in a heap and they walked into freedom. So the Lord reminds us even now before our Red Sea moment that he is a God of miracles and he delights in working wonders through us, his people. So he says, what's in your hand? What's in your mouth? When you give it to me, I will turn a simple stick into the rod of God.
God, and I will make your mouth like a sword. Your mouth is connected to miracles. We are called to be led by his word so that we can lead others by his word and to his word. Ultimately, Jesus and the Lord has great pleasures in working his wonders through us. So as the Exodus story continues, we can see another type and shadow of our journey in this new life. And this is of baptisms. And that is right. I say it in the plural tense because in scripture, the Lord shows us that there are actually three. And you can read about that in Hebrews chapter six and also in first Corinthians chapter 10. And so that first baptism that we receive follows salvation. It's the baptism into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit when we receive salvation. And then in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 and 2, I want to read this to you because it talks about the other two baptisms. Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So when scripture says, do not be ignorant, it's usually because we are. So we see that being baptized under the sea connects to water baptism and being baptized through the cloud is a picture of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you have confessed Jesus as your Lord, I encourage you to consider identifying with him in water baptism and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which will give you power to proclaim the good news with boldness, even praying forth in tongues, and will also give you the power to do works and even greater works than Jesus did, and even greater works than Moses did. That's what Jesus said himself. So lastly, the Lord is instructing us through the tribe that's connected to this month. It is the tribe of Judah. We see it right here front and center on the chalkboard. And the tribe of Judah, they were the king of tribes. They move first in battle and first in praise. And so the Lord is showing us how to move our mouths through the tribe of Judah because the name Judah in Hebrew is Yehuda and it means a people of praise. And you know, it's funny because when you read through the Bible, you often connect the Israelites as a people of murmuring. And often we are too because that's our natural default in the flesh. But praise will become our new default more and more as we renew our minds with our true identity as it talks about in Romans 12. And you know, it's funny because going first in battle in praise doesn't really seem logical, but God's ways are higher than our own. And God inhabits the praises of his people and praise confounds the enemy. So I have to say, I have seen a picture of this in real life because I was looking even at how like a marching band in high school or even in college will start playing music to psych up the home team before the, the game even starts, which really agitates the opposing team. So I thought, wow, that's, that's the picture, you know, how much more so in the spirit. So the reality guys is that we always have the home team advantage and we fight from a position of victory. So that's why we can celebrate and praise because the victory has already been won in the Lion of Judah, Jesus, our Messiah. And therefore we can even speak in boldness. And you know, early in that story of Exodus, God called Moses, but he felt so inadequate. And he said, Lord, I'm slow of speech and I'm slow of tongue. But God encouraged him in Exodus four. He said, Moses, who made your mouth? So therefore go and I will be with your mouth and I will teach you what to say. So later on in Exodus 10, we see that Moses had this transformation and he was really bold because when Pharaoh told him to leave and how he never wanted to see his face again, Moses then spoke up in holy boldness and he said to Pharaoh, you have spoken well, I will see your face no more. And the rest is history because that is exactly what happened. And so Proverbs 18:20. 21 says the righteous are as bold as lions. How? Why? 
week. It's because we are bold in his love and we are bold in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Lion of Judah within us because we are more than conquerors in Christ. And now the final nugget here from the tribe of Judah is about a man named Nashon. And he was from this tribe and his name means courage. And according to Judaic records, he was literally the first man to step into the Red Sea. And so he walked in the Red Sea with courage and the children of Israel followed him. God also ordained the personal steps in his life because we read in scripture that this man Nashon went on to father Salmon, who then married Rahab, who then bore Boaz and ultimately brought forth Jesus our kinsman redeemer. So that is just such awesome encouragement here through the tribe of Judah and the whole chalkboard. I pray that you're encouraged. And you know, the question remains now, will we cross over? Well, if, if you don't know, the word Hebrew means one who crosses over and it's often by water. So the Lord is offering us this fresh start here in Nissan. He is reminding us here in this month of miracles, in this month of of new life that death has truly passed over us and that we have been set free because there was no way that he was going to let sin get between us and there was no way that he could live without us and if he had to come down to redeem us himself he would and he did through Jesus. So now there's no more types and shadows. Real redemption has come. And not just because he had to, but because he wanted to, because of his great love for us. So what are we waiting for? Let's go forward as the redeemed of the Lord into the new land that he has prepared for us in advance. And in closing, I want to read Isaiah 43, 1 through 5. This is from the Passion Translation, and I think it just sums up beautifully. So just read receive these words afresh from the Lord right now. And it says this, now this is what Yahweh says, listen Jacob to the one who created you, Israel, to the one who shaped who you are. Do not fear for I am your kinsman redeemer. I will rescue you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the deep stormy sea, you can count on me to be there with you. And when you pass through the raging waters, you will not drown. And when you walk through persecution like fiery flames, you will not be burned. The flames will not harm you, for I am your Savior, Yahweh, your mighty God, the Holy One of Israel. I give up Egypt as a price to set you free, Cush and Seba in exchange to bring you back. Since you are cherished and precious in my sight, and because I love you dearly, I want to honor you, and I willingly give up nations in exchange for you, and a man to save your life. I am with you now, even close to you, so never yield to fear. Do not fear, for I am your kinsman redeemer. I will rescue you. I have called you by name and you are mine. So thank you, Lord, that we have been redeemed. We have been redeemed to live free and to rest in your love. Thank you, Lord, and thank you for listening. Blessings as you go forth with him into this new year in his love.